Good morning, evening, afternoon. I don't know where you're at right now, but I just want to say thank you for taking the time to either watch what I spoke on Sunday morning or were there to, uh, to watch what was being shared to you. I just wanted to let you know that what was taught was about a response to Jesus out of the good grace that he gives to us. How we got there was talking over two people and two encounters, eyewitness accounts in the Gospel of Luke. First, we have the rich young ruler. And second, we talked about Zacchaeus. And after we talked about that, we, we revisited the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, which like capped all of this teaching together, which I think in my study and from others who've studied this before, that Luke was trying to portray a very important meaning for us to understand how the kingdom of heaven operates. So first, let's talk about the encounter with the rich young ruler. Jesus was preaching, doing his thing, his ministry like he normally does. He was talking about children and having children on his lap, and I imagine that in this time, the rich young ruler was there as well. He came to Jesus uh, with flattery, saying, hey, good teacher. Which to Jesus, he's like, he knew the heart already of the situation that was happening. And I want you to know that we don't, I don't look at the rich young ruler and think, wow, how horrible this man was. I think that he was on the right path, but slightly, like, not oriented to God. So he first, he starts off with this flattery, this good teacher. And Jesus responds and it, it sounds good, but we've, scholars think it was actually a, a slight rebuke to him, saying only the Father is good. So it kind of starts off not, not in, a, in a good situation for the rich young ruler. Then he goes on to say, how must I be saved? Uh, in, Matt, in the Gospel of Matthew, it talks about what good deed must I do to be saved. So this man's asking, like, I do all these moral things, I uphold the law, I, I obey my family and my parents, I, I do not murder, I don't do this, I don't do that. It's just going through the list, the laundry list of things he does not do. Which, also in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus has the teachings about, it's not about just following these laws, it's about having a heart in this. And God gave us laws to be able to uh, walk in unity with God and others and have ethics and not just follow them because we have to follow them, but actually have a heart in them. So he responds, Jesus responds to this man and says, all right, do this one good thing. Sell your possessions, give it to the poor, poor, and follow me. The rich young ruler's response to this was out of sadness and walked away. And the people around asked the question, who can be saved? which is beautiful to me because it sets up a story that goes all the way into Zacchaeus, where says Zacchaeus was also a man of wealth, but his moral standing and ethical uh, decisions were not that great. He stole money from people by abusing a ta- uh, the tax system of Rome, uh, and everybody knew that. He was a chief tax collector, a manager over all the tax, uh, tax collectors, and he like, scammed people out of their money. That's how he became wealthy. So Jesus is coming into town. Uh, At this point, everyone knew that Jesus was a man of uh, high standing uh, morals, a good teacher. Uh, They were questioning if he was actually this new king of David that was going to be in the line to actually sit on the throne in Jerusalem because Jericho was on the way to Jerusalem. Everyone's gathering. Uh, If you read a a little further into uh, Luke 19, they even say, you know, maybe this is the king and his kingdom's coming right now. So everyone's kind of thinking about this, but Zacchaeus is trying to see this Jesus, and he's being crowded and uh, and not allowed to see Jesus. But the sinner, a person who does not know, like has been hurting people, but knows that the prophecy of Jesus Jesus is true and is about to happen, the king's coming, he's like, I got to see this Jesus because he will save us. He runs and goes to a tree in his clothing, which was probably wealthy clothes, nice robes, and all. He probably got all dirty as he climbed that tree, humiliated himself just to see King Jesus. 
And that's all he wanted to do. But he didn't even expect what was going to happen next. This Jesus looked at him and called him by name and said, Zacchaeus, you come down from this tree. And because of that, he climbs down. He's like, yes, I'm here. And he's like, and Jesus is like, I'm going to enter your house today. I believe that a lot of us who watch this and hear this have that same experience, that Jesus has entered their house, your house, just as he entered Zacchaeus' house. And when Zacchaeus was in his house, he responded to the grace of Jesus because Jesus was talking, most likely talking about the kingdom of heaven. He was most likely talking about all the miracles he was doing. His disciples were probably getting all hyped up, getting like, I imagine, like, getting, like, like, getting super happy, excited, like, clapping hands and you know, all this. And I imagine in the midst of all this, Zacchaeus stands up and responds to Jesus, saying, I will give my wealth to the poor. And if I wrong somebody, I'll give them four times as much as what I robbed them from. Four times. That's more than what the law talks to, uh, to people about restitution. They ask two times. He did four. That shows you the heart posture of Zacchaeus, knowing who he was, and that he can only be saved by Jesus. And it was out of a response to Jesus and his grace that he did these things. We sometimes forget this grace in our lives. Ephesians 2 talks about we are saved by grace through faith in the one and only Jesus Christ. It's not by the works, the deeds, the morality. It's about who Jesus was. And this is why I think it was important that Luke talked about the parable of the uh, Pharisee and the tax collector, where the Pharisee went in with all his good deeds, his tithing, and uh, saying all these things, and pointing at all the people around him, saying, I'm not like that person. At least I'm not a sinner like that. But Jesus is saying to us, we should be like the tax collector who beats his chest, knowing that mercy and grace and, and, the, and the covering of sin only is done through God. And in our case, we live in, the, in, a, in a place where we live past the death and the resurrection of Jesus, that we, we beat our chest saying, I don't deserve this, but you gave it to me. So as we go into discussions today, I want to give you an opportunity to talk amongst each other, read the word of God together, and and remember what God has done for you. So the first question I have for you is, I want to encourage you all to read Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, as a reminder of what Jesus has done for you. Second, I want you to just take a moment of reflection with each other of the grace of Jesus in your life and how you, re how you are responding to that. And then third, I just want you to rekindle the joy of your salvation by talking and giving testimony about the encounters of Jesus in your own lives. May you be blessed today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your lives because Jesus has entered your house. Love you all.